Hi, this video deals with the simulation training for the bilobe flap. The defect is first made into a circle. This circle has a center point known as C and this is the diameter A, B. Now, extending the diameter along one side for a distance equal to R, that is the radius distance is extended to a point P which is going to be the pivot point of the flap. Now, from this pivot point P, we are going to plant the flaps. We get a thread and fix it at the pivot point. We need to draw two circles, an outer circle and an inner circle. The outer circle runs from this point, that is the outer circumference of the first defect and the second circle runs from the center point C. Now, the circles are marked, both the outer and inner circles are marked simultaneously. This is very important and when you are, do, when you are reconstructing a defect on the nose, we should plan in such a way that all the flaps come on the dorsum of the nose. Now, the inner circle and the outer circle have been drawn. So, the radius of the outer circle is equal to 3 times the radius of the defect and the radius of the inner circle is equal to 2 times the radius of the defect. Now, a line is subtended from the pivot point P at an angle of 90 degrees. This is going to be the axis of the secondary flap and another line is subtended at 45 degrees. This is going to be the primary flap. The point where this 45 degree angle cuts the inner circle is the point D and the point where the 90 degree angle subtends at the inner circle is the point E. Now, keeping the point D as the center and R that is the radius as the arc, the circle is drawn and keeping the point E as the center, another circle is drawn. This need not have a radius of R, it can be lesser than R, but the length should be extended beyond for a distance or equal to R and it can be triangular in shape to facilitate primary closure of this defect. So this is the primary flap and this is the secondary flap. Now from the markings we have made, first the defect is incised and removed. Now the flaps are incised. First the primary flap is incised and then the secondary flap is incised and harvested. Incision goes down to the subcutaneous tissue. Here it goes down to the underlying pink layer. Now, as we know, the primary flap will be used to cover the defect and the secondary flap will cover the defect created by raising the primary flap. Now, this primary flap needs to move here. There are two things to be noted here. First, we need extensive undermining of all the tissues all around to allow mobilization of these flaps. Secondly, we will have a standing cone deformity at the level of the pivot point. This has to be excised to allow primary closure of the defect. Now, the suturing of the flaps is to be done and the donor site of the secondary flap is to be closed primarily. The suturing of the primary flap is almost completed. We had raised the secondary flap with a triangular edge to facilitate primary closure of the defect. This can be trimmed now and the suturing done. Now, the defect caused by the secondary flap is closed primarily. Even while suturing on the foam, you will note how much of distortion of the tissues occurs as seen in the distortion of the foam. This should be remembered while raising the flap. 
as mentioned earlier, extensive undermining of the surrounding tissues is necessary to facilitate primary closure. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can click on the shown links to see other videos regarding the transposition flap and the classification of flaps. Please do subscribe to this channel to keep connected with the latest in learning hand surgery.